Hello, hello, my lovely, lovely audience. Anyway, welcome to another video. Give me a moment. Uh, yeah, but welcome to another video. Anyway, let's get in. Well, first of all, when I posted a video called You Pick My Next What If with a slightly different selection, a fellow what if -er and friend named Vasto Lord What Ifs made the suggestion of what if Deku was Dracopult and or Hydreigon. I went with Dracopult, he did a Hydreigon what if, and then he asked me what what if I would like him to do on his channel since, well, I don't know. So I gave him the selection between Deoxys and the Typhon, he picked the he picked Deoxys, so I'm going with the So I'm going with the Typhon from the game Prey. Anyway, let's get into the what if. Okay. Deku's born. Everything's fine. Except instead of being born in Japan, he was born on the Apollo space station. I think that's its name, I haven't played the game in like, a while, really long while, can't remember the name of the space station, but yes, I'm gonna go with Apollo, correct me if I'm wrong, the Apollo space station, and right around he the time he's born, everything kind of goes to shit, by that I mean the Typhon escape. And you can probably guess that that's bad. If you've played the game, you probably know how fast the Typhon took over the ship. Because I'll tell you this, it was fast. It was like, within a week, the entire ship was infested and overrun. Like, yeesh. The unique thing is, Midoriya is the only, well, kind of the only survivor. There are small groups of people still alive, but Midoriya is the only survivor in the Typhon areas. The Typhon infested areas. There have been reports of from the people of them seeing a small of them seeing a crib Infested and covered with the coral, if you know, you know, the glowing spider webs. That's what they look like. They are glowing yellow spider webs. They're called coral. But yeah, amongst it, there's a crib. Still fine, still untouched, with a living, breathing human infant. There have even been stories of the phantoms, which are basically this, but rainbow-colored. <laughs> By that, I mean they come in different colors. This is the fire phantom, there's a lightning phantom, which is blue, there's the psychic phantom, which is this, there's the subsets, the energy well, or gravity well one, which is a light blue, there's the ordinary one, but yeah. This human infant would have, well, well, this human infant would reportedly be, well, have black hair with green segments and augments, and they seem to never cry, never, well, do anything that a normal infant would do, just sleep. As time would go by, and, well, the Apollo space station would get worse and worse, we would do a bit of a time skip, because I'm just adding time to how long the game takes place. Like, the game, it's like a month, the time passes, but I'm adding, like, years to this. Because the in character, Morgan Yu, would not be, you know, the whole fragmented Typhon hybrid. That would be replaced by Deku. 
who was originally, well, since the fact that, okay, we do a bit of a jump backwards to when Deku was just born. He would, of course, be born with his quirk. Now, this quirk would be a Typhon-related one. He seemed to be very compatible with them, both in the sense of the Nero mods and just in general existing with them. He would... Well, no Typhon would lash out or attack him. They would mostly treat him as one of their own, which means they would even attempt to utilize him in combat to varying degrees of success because baby, but also baby can shoot out electricity, fire, and use psychic powers. So you can guess that a baby's success results would be varied. But yes, another thing that they find horrific is that they can't reset his memory. Because fun fact, did you know if that, you, that in the game Prey, if you remove a Nero mod, you forget everything that you did after wearing said Nero mod, since the Nero mods attach themselves to your brain. So, yeah, that's how they kept Morgan perpetually trapped in a virtual simulation. They just had him relive the exact same day over and over and over and over and over. By taking the Nero mod out, putting it back in, seeing if he can shapeshift or, like, gain any of the Typhon's abilities. So, yes. Morgan would be replaced by Deku because of his unique compatibility with the Typhon. Although he cannot... Yeah. Though when the place goes to shit, we do a time skip from when I last left off, a few years. Deku is around this point four. And, well, of course, everyone's still struggling to survive. He would wander through the space station, go through its halls, and just absorb of his kind and kin, as he believes them to be, while well, doing what they do best, killing and searching. Searching for suitable creatures to add to the coral. What's... Fun fact, uh, this video contains a lot of spoilers for the game. <laughs> Fun fact, did you know that the coral is actually, you know, people's brains? Like, their nerves, their consciousness, is all stretched out in the coral. And... Once they collect enough, they summon a massive eldritch Cthulhu-like creature known as the Omega, Omega, I believe, which will then consume the coral, the Typhon will disperse, and try and find another place with intelligent life and rinse and repeat. The Omega feeds off of intelligent life's brains through the coral, so, yes. Also, did you know that the Typhon can't feel sorry for anyone? You could be lying on the ground, ripped in half, screaming in agony, and a Typhon would not give a shit. They quite literally cannot feel empathy. Deku can still feel empathy, but it's muted. Like, he would have to f hear Eerie's backstory in order to feel something. With that out of the way, let's continue. He's wandering through the halls and encounters another human encampment. He's seen many of them, and seen many of the people that die. So, of course, he would just sit down. One of his eyes would turn white, as he would tell his kin where humans are. One would wander up to him, concerned that a child managed to survive. A grin would appear on Midoriya's face, fire would ignite from his hand, and you can pretty much guess what happens next. In any way, that's an average day for the small child. 
until some, well, in his eyes, jackass, decides to neuter every titan, typhon on the ship. The Null Pulse, which does not harm Deku since he is half typhon, half human. Though he has a bit of a plan. You see, when he neutered the Omega and every Typhon there, Deku got a bit of an idea. Infesting Earth. Because that would be so much more food for the Omega. He just needs to reverse the Null Pulse and get off the ship. And of course, Morgan is not a hybrid. You know, he isn't a Typhon-human hybrid that is designed to look like Morgan. Yeah. Yeah, that's legitimately what happened. Morgan got replaced with a Typhon-human hybrid that, you know, looks like him, but has none of his memories and is actually, quite frankly, a little bit, you know, Typhon-human hybrid. Though this is the purebred Morgan. So, well, Morgan's not seen again. And his brother, who I can't remember the name of, his body is found. But it looks like he died from a mimic. In case you're wondering what it looks like, uh, I'll just describe it to you since I don't want to get demonetized. <laughs> when you die from a mimic, you essentially look like you got drained of everything. Blood, tissue, you're just bones. Your skin goes all an unnatural color, like... Like, you know... Uh... Your skin goes gray. You complete... You lose your eyes, you... Look like you were drained entirely of everything. And the mimics emerge from your dead body multiply, and then split apart. Like, they multiply their limbs, then split apart. <clears throat> resulting in more mimics. And, well, Deku would send off a distress beacon, and since he's unneuted every Typhon there, and also, you know, killed everyone who could stop him, what could go wrong, he thinks to himself before the spaceship behind him explodes. <laughs> so he ends up being rescued with the entire ship exploding because Morgan, well, kinda had a backup plan in case something like this happened. Baba Booey. So, I bet you're curious. What's a Neuromod, and how does it work? Well, basically, they're just uploading skills into your brain. <laughs> also, in this world, they're a bit different. They work with quirks. Like, they improve your quirk, make you know how to use your quirk better. Also, Neuromods also have the little bit of a function, a little bit of a feature. They can give quirks, but that line of Neuromods is rare, and expensive, and very much still in testing. So yes, Deku would be transported to Earth, not happy about it, but he knows the Omega survived. So whilst he's looking out the window of the ship, he would get a bit of a smile on his face, knowing that the Omega survived the blast, and is more than willing to come and consume. He just needs to build up a bit, a good enough Typhon army. So, yeah. One human rights violation later, aka they, them still using Deku as, you know, the Neuromod test subject, one human rights violation later, and one court case later, a certain shaggy-haired, exhausted-looking individual, who is commonly referred to as the Justice Hobo, aka <laughs> uh, Eraserhead, yes, Justice Hobo, I went with that. 
So, yes. <laughs> uh, ends up in the care of Eraserhead and President Mike. The reason President Mike... Everyone on the face of the earth would murder me if I did not include him. Because, you know, for some reason, everyone seems to ship the two like no tomorrow. So, yeah. I feel like having my head attached to my neck. So, I'm doing it. So, one night, Deku is just staring up at the sky. President Mike would come up like, Hey, kiddo, what you looking at? He would say, sitting down next to him. Deku would look up at the sky and just say, Sometimes when I look up at the sky, I see something. Something in between the stars. Something residing in the darkness of, this, of the night. He would look down and turn at President Mike. It hates you. It hates all of you. President Mike would just look at him concerned, like, What do you mean it hates us? It hates you. That's it. Nothing more, nothing less. He would say, then back, looking back up at the sky, President Mike would just be like, Alright, give him a thumbs up and just walk away. He would go to Aizawa and be like, This kid is traumatized, we need Hound Dog like ASAP. This, I don't know what they did, but something broke that kid. He is he is not okay in the noggin. We need, we need Hound Dog. So, yeah, that happens. Also, well, one time, another thing happens. A certain flamey-haired individual, or flaming individual, realized that this kid, this kid has a fire quirk, at least a somewhat flame-compatible quirk. So he's like, your kid, train with my kid. Now, I'm number two. I can do whatever the fuck I want. That happens. Yep. <laughs> That's what Endeavor does. So, as Todoroki is waiting in the arena for his challenger, very annoyed at his father, he would notice Deku was just dragging this big bag, it, this big duffel bag, like the thing you see in Pokemon Sword and Shield. <laughs> like that thing that you get at the start of the game. Imagine that, but bigger. And it's stuffed, like full with stuff. He's just barely able to drag it across the dirt. Todoroki would be naturally confused, and soon would get his answer. One of Deku's eyes would turn white, as the bag would float, and then he hears a screech. A tormented, psychotic screech, and another one, and another one. About four screeches, as w one of the, as the bag would begin to shift and turn black, as... It would turn into this, a greater mimic, which is a mimic, but bigger, with hair. If you want to know what a mimic looks like, this is a mimic. This is what they look like. Imagine this, but bigger with hair on its back. The duffel bag would turn into that, as it would crawl along Deku's arm and haunt him. Four nightmarish creatures, one purple, one with a lavender light, the other with an orange, the other with a blue, and the other with no at all, would merge, each whispering and talking. Todoroki's unable to make it out, but it sounds like they're angry, angry at him. The one that is not glowing would 
put out its hand, and a ball of yellow light would come out and be shot at Todoroki. Yes, this is something they can do. As the other three would blitz Todoroki at extreme speeds, yes, this is another thing they can do. An ability they can do is, well, like a dash. Very fast, shadowy dash. The three of them dash at Todoroki, the fire one burning his leg, the electric one tasing him by the throat, the psychic one just holding him down with its psychic abilities, making it so that he can't move. Todoroki, of course, would try and fight back using his eyes, but since he can't turn and he can only make ice on his right side, the Typhon know pretty well to stay away from his from the side emitting ice. Todoroki would eventually manage to get an ice shard into one of the creatures, stabbing it through the chest. The smoke would dissipate, revealing a human corpse, like the kind that was on the ship. The kind that was just sucked of everything. Todoroki is now traumatized! <laughs> Deku would just calmly walk up to it. One of his eyes would go white. The thing would float. And then re-emit its, you know, darkness. Let's say it was the fire one. Yeah, it just... Poof! Now it's back. He just turned a human corpse into that thing. Yes, this is something that happens. Four tentacles would come out of Deku's back, as well, he would just stab Todoroki in four, all four of his limbs and lift him up, Venom style, and ragdoll him, just fling him around, smack, 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 and then the witch, Deku would just throw him to the side. Todoroki would, of course, try and fight back, launching an ice shard, but it would stop as this yellow glowing thing, it looks like a shield or a barrier, would just prevent it from passing forward. This is another thing the Typhon can do, specifically the Weavers, which is like this, but much, much, much bigger, the size of a person. And also, oh, the weavers are responsible for the coral. They're the ones who make it, obviously. They can also shoot lasers, and they're the ones of well, balls of energy. And they're also the ones responsible for raising the... For raising the phantoms. Deku, both of his eyes would go pure white, as he would emit the same smoke as his phantom brethren, except his arm would produce fire, the other lightning, and he would just zap and burn Todoroki, melting off the ice covering his fire side. He would then use his telekinesis to launch in one direction, one half of his body the other, one half, his bo one half of his body one direction, and the other psychic- give me a moment. Apologies, let us continue. The other psychic Typhon would grab the other half of, Bo of Todoroki and just pull him, pull him, and pull him. It feels like he's going to be ripped in half. But before then, the other two Typhon, the electric and fire one, would gut punch him both together and use their respective abilities, burning Todoroki even further. <laughs> Let's just say his mother's scar is not the worst one he has. Todoroki has been rendered unable to battle. Izuku Midoriya gains two experience points. <laughs> I had to make the Pokemon reference since, you know, fire and ice, you know, blah blah blah. But yes, Todoroki is now on the floor, but pointing upwards, <laughs> like face in the dirt. Deku just takes his weird army of nightmare monsters and leaves. Endeavors like 
That was amazing. I need to invite this kid to train even more. <laughs> because Endeavor's definition of training is survive. I'm ending this off here since... You know what? Nah. 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 I'm gonna keep on going. <sighs> we do a time skip a few years to the start of the anime. Deku, of course, would not know Bakugo since they would be in entirely different schools. Deku would, of course, go to the entrance exam because, you know, erase ahead. Uh... He would do pretty well on the written exam because of his hive mind, and, you know, the fact that the core wool is made up of, you know, people's brains! I'm pretty sure you can use some of the information out of that. So he does decently on the written exam, but he really just shines in the combat exam. Ida is being a bitch and asks his dumbass question, Deku is standing there, menacingly, whispering to himself. I had to open my curtain. Uh, yeah. Whispering to himself and just being in general creepy. He is like, and you're distracting everyone whilst doing his hand chops. Deku would just flip him off. As, you know, Ida would notice the big bag next to him, and he's like, what's that? Deku would just look him dead in the eyes and say, it's for my quirk, it's filled with dead bodies. <laughs> Ida is now just jaw on the dirt. Brother Mike's like, oh, hey, hey, it's my kid. He's over there. Hey, yeah, yeah, that's my boy. And also, it's not a bag, it's actually a weird, hairy thing made from the dead bodies. He does now, like, that's so inappropriate. <laughs> yeah, well, fuck, well, deal with it. It's my quirk, bitch. <laughs> he just says that and walks away. <laughs> he does now just, like, I got disrespected. Damn it. Now, after that little display, Deku would of course use his quirk on the dead bodies, creating an army of phantoms, this time including a gravity well phantom, which can launch shit into the sky like sands from Undertale, and I can't remember any of the other subtypes, or subspecies as you would call it. Let's just fill out the rest with a basic one, uh, two fires, three electrics, and two psychics. Okay. So, while the psychics would be doing their thing, tearing the robots to shreds, and scaring everyone off, as they would, of course, all blitz, different robots, burning, melting, electrifying, ripping to shreds, they would be, like, imagine the most efficient and horrifying army made up of nightmare monsters. Here's what they look like in game, if you would like to know. Yes, horrifying, is it not? So, yes, that's what they are doing. Deku hears a scream for help as the Zero Pointer comes out. He's like, I could let her die and get extra, get another minion, an extra coral for when the Omega finally arrives, or I can save her life. Fuck, I saw a damn it, shit, damn it. He would say while beginning to walk towards, like, Walk towards the currently sh trapped girl. Oh, my damn it, Aizawa. Give me a moment. Because as I said, it takes eerie type shit to get, you know, Izuku to feel bad for someone. So he obviously does not care about a random person he has not 
He does not know ending up being crushed. At least it's a painless death. But thanks to Aizawa, you know, he's kind of got to do it. Which he's annoyed by, but does it. <laughs> and just removes the rubble with psychic abilities, picks her up, and books it. Full on phantom speed, which is ridiculous. And I think I'm gonna end this off here. It's about 30 minutes. I wanna get this video out. Goodbye, my lovely, lovely audience, and bye bye.